culture, it had shopping, it had jobs, education, everything you could want. But Nazareth, on the other hand, seemed to have nothing. Just a little burg of less than a hundred farmers, shepherds, laborers who would walk an hour or so to Sepphoris every day to work for rich people or maybe to sell their meager uh, wares. And some people in uh, Nazareth actually lived in caves, in limestone caves that have been unearthed there as well. There is actually a church built over a home, built over a cave that is called the Church of the Annunciation, where uh, tradition says this story took place today. Or another clue to Podunkville being Nazareth is that famous word that you see on the screen uttered by Nathaniel, where one day his friend Philip came to him. This is early in the story from John, and Philip says, we found him. We have found the one whom the prophets wrote about, the one whom the law of Moses foretold, Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. And that's all it took for uh, Nathaniel to say the, the famous words, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And if you grew up in a podunk town like I did, that's kind of the view, isn't it, from people that live in larger towns. Can anything good come out of, and you just fill in the blank with the name of your town? Why in the world would God pick Nazareth? Well, anybody else would have picked the bigger town, Marion, right? The Sepphoris of that day. It had everything, a great place for a king to grow up, whereas little Nazareth had Nothing. But does it say something about how God works? That his favor doesn't come to the proud and the arrogant, but to the humble people, the meek and the lowly. Reminds me of a story depicted by a cartoonist named H.T. Webster, drawn in 1909 on the occasion of the 100th anniversary of the birth of a famous president. He drew what you see on the screen, two Kentucky frontiersmen pausing to visit on a snow-covered trail. And one man says to the other, any news down in the village, Ezra? And his friend says, well, Squire McLean's gone to Washington to see President Madison sworn in. And old Mr. Spellman tells me that that Bonaparte fella from... France has captured most of Spain. What's new out here, neighbor? And his friend thinks a moment and says, oh, nothing at all, nothing at all, except for a new baby boy, born down to Tom Lincoln's place. But nothing ever happens out here. Well, you never know, do you? Sometimes amazing things are born out there in those little burgs like Nazareth or that town in Kentucky where Abraham Lincoln was born. Or if you would drive north of here toward Cresco, Iowa, you will encounter a little town called Saudi, another little burg. And just outside of Saudi on a farm was born a man named Norman who went on to win a Nobel Prize. His name is Norman Borlaug. Maybe you've heard of him. More about Nazareth. There, the name Nazareth comes from a Hebrew word, netzer, that describes a branch or a shoot coming out of a stump, like you see on the screen. Now, some of you have experienced this, haven't you? You've tried to cut down a tree in your backyard or your front yard, maybe big, maybe little, and you think you've killed that tree off. But then, in the spring, up comes out of that stump or what was left of it, a little green shoot. And before you know it, you've got your tree back. Netzer is the word for that little shoot coming up. And last week, we heard words from a prophet named Isaiah 
for people that were in exile. They were basically POWs, had been hauled off to modern-day uh, Iraq, but then it was called Babylonia, or Babylon was the city, the capital city. And they knew they were going to be stuck there for a long time. And Isaiah thought of a picture to send to them in words. And so he wrote these words from Isaiah chapter 11. A shoot shall come up from the stump of Jesse, who was King David's father, and a branch or a net there from his roots shall bear fruit. They are saying that this nation of Israel that has been cut down by the Babylonians, there will be life one day coming out of that stump, but it will be a long time down the road. Why call a village Nazareth? Well, maybe because they thought that there are no hopeless causes with God. That one day God would send a new king to deliver Israel. But little did they know that that branch or that net there would be a child who grew up right in their town of Nazareth, of Nazareth. This morning you heard the wonderful uh, tune, Still a Knocked uh, Silent Night, from our little handbell choir. And the words that you see on the screen from Isaiah 9 are always read on Christmas Eve as they speak of this child that is to be born. That is a powerful song, Silent Night. A little over 100 years ago, some of you know this story, on Christmas Eve 1914, World War I was raging in Europe, and soldiers from both sides were, were homesick, and they were in their trenches, hoping to live. And suddenly a British sentry heard a clear German tenor voice singing a carol that he recognized coming through the darkness. And soon that single voice was joined by other German voices in, a, in that very carol. The British soldiers then struck up, Oh, God rest ye merry gentlemen. And when they were finished, the German soldiers began to sing the song you heard played today, Still a Nacht, and the British joined in on verse 2, singing Silent Night, Holy Night. And then the British sentries looked across no man's land and saw something strange, little lights kind of clustered. And it was small Christmas trees being held up by the German soldiers with candles on the, on the branches, on the net zares. Sort of a truce sign. And then one of the most remarkable events in the history of military warfare took place as one by one, soldiers on both sides climbed out of their trenches and ventured into no man's land, where they shook hands, as you see on the screen, shared cigars and food and drink, and spent the rest of that night and all the next day playing games and singing carols and celebrating the birth of the Prince of Peace. And an event like that reminds us of the power of this story and of this one that is born. So let's dig into it now in a little more depth. And notice that it began with a word about impossibility, and it will end with the same word. It begins with the words, in the sixth month. Well, the sixth month of what? Well, if you turn back a page, you find another story about a very elderly lady, a cousin of Mary's whose name is Elizabeth, who was barren, unable to have children. But yet the angel Gabriel comes to her and her husband and announces the incredible news that they will have a child. And his name will be John, John the Baptist. And it has been six months since that word came. And now Gabriel has come back to call on another unlikely person named Mary. And 
he calls on her perhaps in her home, many believe that, or maybe, just maybe, he called on her down at the spring, down where she went every day to gather water. If you were to go to Nazareth today, there is a church called the Church of the Annunciation, a Greek Orthodox church built over a site, and in the basement of that site is this spring where they believe this event took place. In biblical times, spring water was referred to as living water. And we receive living water in our life. It starts at a holy bubbling spring. We call it a baptismal font where God meets us with an amazing word that we are favored, that we are blessed, that we are given a new name, child of God. And as we look at Mary's reaction to this news today, I want you to think about this as sort of a template for faith, sort of a roadmap to get from where you're at to faith. And I think as we look at these topics, we see ourselves as in a mirror. First, she is favored. Gabriel says, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. Notice that who takes the first step here? It wasn't Mary, it was God through this angel. And that's at the root of our understanding of how God works. God comes to us before we seek God out and comes to us in the water and the word and says, you are my favored child. But as we grow up, we are very perplexed, aren't we? In our childhood, in our teenage years, in our adult years, by many things. And Mary is perplexed and wonders, what kind of word is this? Remember that she is engaged. Did you know she was about 14 years old? She would have been in about, what, eighth grade if she were living in Marion? But you see, that was the age that young women got married back in that day because they only lived to be about 30 or maybe 35 if they were lucky. Many of them died in childbirth. They were expected to begin having children as soon as they biologically could. But she's looking forward to her wedding, as anyone would, and wonders perhaps, why me? Why now? Couldn't you find somebody else to do this? Don't you have better things to do? Often we are perplexed, aren't we, by what we sense God might be inviting us to do Maybe through somebody else who says, who comes up to you and says, you know, I think you would be a good, and then fill in the blank, Sunday school teacher, or small group leader, or servant downtown at Mission of Hope, or whatever it would be. And we often feel inadequate and perplexed. And then naturally, after being perplexed, she questions how this can be since she is a virgin. How can I bear a child if I am a virgin, she wonders. How can this be? But you know, that's what others had said in the Bible. This is how God works. Someone has said God loves the word impossible. Noah hears a word from the Lord to build an ark. How can this be? Abraham meets strangers outside his tent saying that in the spring his elderly wife Sarah will have a child and she is barren. And behind the tent flap Sarah laughs. How can this be? Moses hears a voice talking to him from a burning bush saying go down to Egypt and tell old Pharaoh let my people go. How can this be? And when those same people come to the edge of the Red Sea with Egyptian chariots in hot pursuit, 
Moses lifts his staff and the sea miraculously rolls open and the people of Israel run through to freedom on the other side. How can this be? A boy named Goliath faces boy named David faces down a giant named Goliath with a sling and a rock and strikes him dead. How can this be? Over and over there are these stories, Daniel in the lion's den, the three men in the fiery furnace. How can this be that they survive? This is not the first time, Mary, that God has done the impossible and it won't be the last. And maybe she pondered those stories in her mind and in her heart as she wondered what in the world to say to this Gabriel. And now we come to the climactic moment of the story where Gabriel plays his ace in the hole in this high-stakes game of chance and tells Mary this word, and now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month, there it is again, the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Martin Luther once wrote in a Christmas sermon that at this moment, All the angels in heaven held their breath. What would this young girl say? And what did she say? Let's read it together off the screen. Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. She commits. She commits. And the world would never be the same. She commits to a God who loves to do the impossible, to bring life out of death and victory out of defeat and hope out of despair and joy out of sorrow. And one day down the road, 30 years or so, this child of Mary would do the impossible again and die on the cross for the sins of the world and rise from the dead so that you can believe today that God can do the impossible so that you can be truly favored with forgiveness, with joy, with a reason for living and the sure and certain promise of eternal life. Let us pray. Oh God, may we today put ourselves in Mary's shoes and take comfort from her story and find ourselves, whether we're questioning, whether we're perplexed, whether we're feeling favored, may your spirit move all of us at some point in our lives to say with her, here I am, a servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your will. Amen. Please stand.